uh, when roads are like this, you call them greasy. Um, and they are indeed greasy um, because, you know, it's the tough thing, right? Because we had the warm weather and the, the roads aren't as cold as they had been. And so you've got snow coming down that's wet to begin with, coming down to a wet road surface, creating slush. Uh, it just makes it difficult to turn, difficult to stop, difficult to go. Um, so you had it all. You were right. I mean, if you don't have to go out, just don't go out. Um which, what am I saying, right? I could have called this in and I came here. Um, but, uh, you know, just drive with the responsibility and care this morning. Well, you've got good snow tires, thanks to our friend Wes Ward, and you've got four-wheel drive. Exactly. And you're a Vermonta. And I got me some experience. All and right. I feel bad for my son because at 6.52, I woke him up this morning, got him out of bed. School's closed. At 6.55, the phone call came to school was closed. So three minutes more, and he could have slept in, dang it. So sorry, buddy. He had to, he had to get up. So. All right, good policies. Uh, we're getting close to spring. It's next week, believe it or not with the white stuff coming down here. And, you know, I talk to a lot of folks out there. They're they're doing some business out of their home. And we're yeah. not, you know, we're not talking like the Etsy stuff. We're talking, well, I, I know somebody that sells eggs. You yeah. know, um, we've got local maple producers getting ready for a busy season. A lot of Hope. folks go to farmer's markets with the produce. That's right. Yeah. And, of course, the sugar makers are hoping that this year will be as good as last year. Yeah. But we got to talk about this in farming because these are things that are really starting to ramp up here. And we've had conversations about how important it is to have endorsements or coverage for such things. Yeah, it's, it's extremely important because the second you're doing something like selling eggs, that's now a business exposure, which by definition is excluded on a traditional homeowner policy, whether it be a renter's policy or a traditional home that you own homeowner policy. Um, you know, so you start doing things like that or selling produce or or any kind of an exposure where it can be defined as a business exposure, you're not going to have liability protection because that's an exclusion on the policy. A lot of exclusions on homeowner policies, most of them, not all of them, can be bought back. And how do you do that? Well, there's business endorsements available on almost every homeowner policy from almost every homeowner company. Not all. That's why I say almost, but most of them. So you can find out. And now, especially over the past couple of years, I've seen a trajectory of some acceptance of agricultural, a.k.a. farm type exposures on homeowner policies. Well, I've seen a lot of vegetable stands up and down 114 and like some of the other byways out there where somebody's got this really nice garden and they're so proud of yeah, their, their peppers, their tomatoes mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that. And they set them upside the road, you know, on an honor system. Sure. And, and these are things to think about. And then we got uh, uh, a couple, a family, whatever, uh, up by me. They've got alpacas. Yep. You know, that's farming. It is farming. And you've got some livestock, you get some exposure, and people go, well, it doesn't matter. You know, I'm not that worried about it. Well, think about this. They don't have to get sick. They just have to accuse you that they got sick off your eggs because that's when uh, litigious action takes place. And that can, that in its own can cost a ton of money. So you need you need to prepare, to be prepare and be understanding that you are exposed, even if you don't ultimately feel that's possible. But, you know, so like I said, many companies will offer some type of an agricultural exposure if you have a couple of animals. You know, I've got one company, they say the max you can have is four. I've got some other companies that say, no, we'll, we'll consider more depending on the operation, you know. Um, so it's one of those things to have a dialogue. And then if you do happen to have enough of an agricultural exposure where you exceed the, the, the comfort level of a traditional homeowner policy, there's there's definitely options for you. Um, if you're more of a, a, you know, gentleman farm is the term, right? If you're more of just have a, you know, maybe I've got five cattle and I do some maple sugaring and I do this and I do that. I have a couple of horses. A mini farm policy uh, is what we call it with one of our companies, but they're called different things for different companies. But basically, gentleman farm type policies where, you know, the primary focus, again, is we're looking to insure the house. But then we're also going to look to insure any of the outbuilding barn buildings you have, cover your liability exposure of having the animals, of having the sugaring operation uh, and covering uh, the value of the animals and the value of the sugaring equipment and more. One question I've never asked you, is there a considerable pricing difference between a full on farmer's coverage as opposed to an endorsement and in any of those. Yeah. So, scenarios. and that's honestly part of my workflow is, and, and it's part of all of our workflow where we're going to say, okay, well, we're going to test the waters and see if this makes sense over here by just endorsing that on your homeowner policy. But at the same time, part of the exercise may be to quote the gentleman farm policy and just compare the two gentleman farm policy. Mini farm is typically going to be a little more expensive because it is considering a, a farming operation more through and through versus just addressing a singular thing. Um, so it's something to, to compare with if you want, but ultimately, 
ultimately it comes down to what's going to provide the proper coverage with the least amount of potential gaps or exclusions that could cause problems. You know, if you're maple sugaring for yourself, and a lot of people do that, you know, they got those small small boil operations and they're making maple syrup for the, them and their friends and their family, they're not selling it. Well, that not, doesn't necessarily need an agricultural exposure uh, liability endorsement. Maybe wouldn't hurt, but it's not necessarily a business exposure. You want to make sure that if you are selling it or especially many people who wholesale it, uh, you know, by the buckets and the gallons and the drums, uh, you want to make sure you got proper coverage for that stuff, <laughs> especially when you consider what the uh, cost of an evaporator is or the cost of, an, uh, you know, an osmosis machine. This stuff's not cheap, um, very expensive. So well, you want to make sure you got coverage. There's some rather large sugaring operations mm-hmm. up by me. We've got Sweet Tree on one side of the road. We've got Three Peaks uh, maple sugaring just down the road from me on yeah. the other side. Yep. But there are a lot of small, like I'm sure you see when you come in Severance Hill Road, there's that small boil house out there by James. Plenty of them. Yeah. Plenty of them. Yeah. So, but you know, when it comes to, and this, this can be broadened to any type of business, but this morning we're talking more agricultural and farm, you know, have the dialogue, you know, I've got people who maybe started with two animals and now are up to seven, eight, nine, ten animals, but still on a homeowner policy. Why is that? A lot of them may say, if you talk to them, they may go, oh, my homeowner's insurance is fine with this. Ignorance is bliss, I swear, came from the insurance industry because if the company doesn't know about it, yeah, they're fine with it because they don't know about it. Um, but I think if companies found out about it, that's when they would be like, oh, we're going to have to get off this risk and, and try, you're going to have to try something else like a foreign policy. So. Well, as with most things in life, it's always best to err on the side of caution. And you said it's important to have the dialogue. Tell them how. Very easy. Give us a call, 748-5224. You can find us on Portland Street in St. Johnsbury, online, thebarrettagency.com. Google Facebook and YouTube. Just look for Barrett Insurance Agency. Hey, you got me thinking about maple syrup. <laughs> well, no, that's cool because uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we play mad, uh, maple trivia. Well, I've seen all the, the the maple syrup downstairs. You have one or two less every week as I walk by. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, yet, keep, I keep winning as I walk by where you store them. Yet, so. to, <laughs> yet to be claimed prizes. <laughs> Magic in the morning. Tune in next week for good policies. Here's Jason Moraz.